Well, welcome back to our lesson on the flipped classroom. Tonight we're going to cover three main topics. The first one might seem kind of familiar, but the second two are definitely not familiar. Okay, so we're going to start by simplifying roots, not only square roots, but cubed roots, fourth roots, fifth roots. Then we're going to simplify roots with variables, and then we're going to talk about adding and subtracting roots. So we've got three big topics to cover tonight. So let's go ahead and get this definition in our notebook. To simplify a square root, we need one perfect square, let's underline that, and one non-perfect square. So we've talked about perfect squares, we've factored perfect squares, and I've listed out our perfect squares. Hopefully you're pretty familiar with them. Um, we've played that in several games as well. So let's go ahead and attack a few questions. If I want to take the square root of 27, I have to say to myself, I need one perfect square and one non-perfect square. So what two numbers multiply to 27? Well, hopefully you're thinking 9 and 3. So here's how we want you to rewrite it. Radical 9 times radical 3. That gets us radical 27. Now you say, which one of these do I know the answer to? Well, what is the square root of 9? That is the number 3. And I don't know the square root of 3, so I leave my final answer as 3 radical 3. So you, let me say it again. You want one that you know the perfect square of and one that you don't. Then you take the perfect square and you leave the other one. Let's try number 2, radical 200. Okay, you've got to give me two numbers that multiply to 200 where 1 is a perfect square. So if you've got to look back at your perfect square list, which of those numbers can multiply to 200? Hopefully you're thinking 2 times 100. Okay, and again, you should know the answer to one of those. I don't know the square root of 2, but I do know the square root of 100 is 10. So notice how I write this. I'm going to put the 10 first, and I'm going to leave the radical 2. We always want to write that constant number as our coefficient. Okay, number 3, radical 48. Two numbers that multiply to radical 48. Now, some people like to go with 6 and 8. Do you see a problem with that? I hope so. I don't know the square root of either of those. Although 6 times 8 is 48, I don't know the square root of 6, and I don't know it of 8. So that would be the incorrect option. Find another set of numbers that multiplies to 48. Okay, looking at those perfect squares, I'm going to say 16 times 3 multiplies to 48. Now, this is a better option because I know the square root of 16 is 4, and I don't know the square root of 3. So again, I can't stress enough to make sure it's somebody you know. Now, number 4, you'll see I threw a little bear trap in there. I threw a number 7 in front of it. And that's okay. Just carry it down. Leave the 7. Figure out what multiplies to 75. I'm going to go with 25 times 3. I'm thinking 3 quarters. And now when I clean this up, I'm going to leave the 7. The 25 becomes a 5. Actually, I'm going to leave those in parentheses. And I'm going to leave my radical 3. Now you'll notice, there's no plus sign in this problem. Don't add these two numbers together. When things are next to each other in mathematics, we multiply. So I'm going to say this is 35 radical 3. Alright, moving on. To simplify a cube root, we need one perfect cube and one non-perfect cube. So almost identical to perfect squares, except now your list of numbers to choose from is different. And again, I've thrown some of our perfect cubes that we've talked about. We've factored perfect cubes earlier. Um, and these are our perfect cubes that we should know. So let's take a look at a cubed root of 16. Now, 16 is not a perfect cube because three numbers don't multiply to it. But what number off our list can multiply to 16? Well, if you take it, your look at your list, I would say 8 goes in there, and 8 times 2 gets me 16. Now, what is the cube root of 8? Well, what three numbers multiply to get you to 8? Of course, that's 2, and then cube root of 2. One mistake some people make is they forget to label that cube root back on here. Make sure that cube root stays there. All right, 81. Now, again, I need a perfect cube. Look at your list of perfect cubes. We had 1, 8, 27, 64. Obviously, you can't pick a number bigger than 81, so it's got to be one of those three. 8, 27, or 64. So I'm going to say 27 goes in there, and 27 times 3 is 81. So I know the cube root of 27 is the number 3, and I'm left with 3 cubed root of 3. 
Okay, so again, write the two of them down under the roots. The one you know comes outside. Number three. All right, I've got a number in front, and that's just going to stay in the problem. So just leave it there. Four. Bring it down. I need to find two numbers that multiply to 250 where one's a perfect cube. Look at that list of numbers again. Okay, I'm going to say 125 times 2. All right, now again, just ask yourself, which of these do I know? Well, the cube, well, I'm bring that 4 down, and the cube root of 125, what three numbers multiply to 125? Well, that's just 5, and I'll leave my cube root of 2. And then, since these are next to each other, we're multiplying, so I'm going 20 cube root of 2. Now, there's no reason to stop at perfect cubes. You could keep going. Perfect 4s, perfect 5s, perfect 6s. So I'll give you two examples of perfect 4s. Now, we probably haven't talked about these numbers, but clearly they're easy to get. I'm taking a number 4 times and multiplying it to get my perfect cube. For example, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 is 256. And you could keep going with 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. So if I have the fourth root of 32, I need one of these numbers and a non-perfect 4. So hopefully you can say to yourself, well, that would be 16 times 2. The fourth root of 16 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16, and I'm left with the fourth root of 2 then. Likewise, notice I have this 5 in front. Please put that in parentheses and just bring it down. So the fourth root of what and the fourth root of what get you to 162. Well, 256 is already out because it's bigger than 162. So I'm going to go with 81 times 2 gets me 162. So I have my 5 that's here. This number turns into a 3, and I'm going to leave that fourth root of 2. Again, when these two numbers are next to each other, we're just going to multiply and call that 15 fourth root of 2. All right, we're switching gears to our next topic, and this is called simplifying roots with variables. So title this section. Now, if you have a number under the radical, we're going to break it down the same way. But I'm going to show you how to break these variables down as well. So go ahead and take perfect notes here. I'm going to break, start with the 18 and say that's radical 9 times radical 2. And hopefully you're fairly confident with that. I feel like we've done that a lot by now. Now, I have to break them down into perfect squares because this is called a square root. So I could say x squared and a plain old x would give me a total of x cubed. Now why is that? Because when I multiply, I add the exponents. There are 2 here and everybody has an exponent of 1, which gives me a total of 3. And again, the most I can put under the radical is a square, because this is called a square root. Now I'll start with the y's. I need a total of 6 of them. So I can go y squared, y squared, and y squared. 2, 4, 6, that gives me 6 of them. And the most I can put under here is a 2, because this is a square root. Now I'm going to go through and cancel out things I know. The square root of 9 is 3. I don't know radical 2. A square and a square root are so nice because they actually cancel each other out. So now that's just an x. This one stays. The square and the square root cancel, so there's a y. The square and the square root cancel, there's a y. The square and the square root cancel, there's a y. Now I'm just going to multiply my terms together. I have a 3 and an x. And a y times y times y is y cubed. And then in the radical, I'm left with the 2 and the x. So I broke radical 18, x cubed y to the 6, down to this. Now you know you're right as long as this number isn't bigger than 2, because of that's the square root. So let me say what we did again. We said 18 is 9 times 2, which broke down to 3 radical 2. Piece of cake. Now we said there's 3 total, so I had to make 3 total down here. Square root meaning they had to have a 2 here, so a 2 and a 1. 6, I needed 2, 4, 6, and any time I'm squaring a square root, they undo each other. Let's try another one. Alright, again, I'm going to leave this friendly 2 in front as I rewrite this. So 27, what two numbers are we thinking to get to 27? 9 times 3. 
Excellent. All right, now I have a square root. So I have to have everybody as squares down here. So I'm going to say that's x squared and x squared. And I need to get a total of 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. There I go. y to the 7th. I think I'm just going to have to carry it down below here. So I have y squared, y squared. Right now I'm at a total of 4, 6. And now I need just one more to get me 7. And then I have one lonely z hanging out. Alright, so I'm just going to go through and write down everybody I know. I'm going to leave this 2. This turns into a 3. That's going to stay a radical 3. The square and square root cancel. The square and square root cancel. Square and square root cancel. 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 Then I'm left with a radical y and a radical z. And now I'm just going to put everybody out front who goes together out there. So I have 2 times 3, which of course is 6, so I got rid of those. I have x and x, which makes x squared. I have y times y times y, which is y cubed. Now inside the radical, I'm left with a 3, a y, and a z. And there you have it. That's our final answer. Now, perhaps you've seen a shortcut um, in your head on how to get from x to the 4th to having an x squared out here, or a y to the 7th and having y cubed and y here. If you see that shortcut and you want to go with it, um, you can ask us tomorrow and we'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Um, otherwise, we're going to write these out. Number three. The only note I want to make for us at the top here is multiply first. Okay, so don't break each radical down first. Let's multiply first. Let's get one big radical. So 2 times 8 gives me 16 x to the 6 times x to the 1st, when you multiply, you add exponents, so that's x to the 7th. y to the 1st times y to the 1st, when you multiply, you add, so that's y to the 2nd. Okay, now you're not done, because now you got to break her down. Radical 16, do you need to break that up, or should you know the answer? Radical 16 is a perfect square, so I'm going to leave it just like that. x to the 7th, I need 7 total, so I'm going 2. That's a total of 4. 6, one more, without any powers. And then I need a y squared. Okay, and now we'll simplify. I know the square root of 16 is the number 4. Square and the square root cancel. Square and the square root cancel. Square and the square root cancel. Left with one radical x. Those cancel, and I'm left with a y. So anytime they cancel, they come outside of the radical. So my final answer is x times x times x is x cubed, I have a y, and then a plain old radical x. All right, now I tried to get a little sneakier, and notice it's not a square root anymore. It's a cubed root. So now, instead of everybody being a 2 under the radical, everybody has to make a 3. So let's see, do you know the cubed root of 8, or do you have to break it down? Well, the cube root of 8, if you look at your cube root list, it's on there. We know the cube root of 8. So I'm going to leave that as the cube root of 8, because I know that answer. Now, when I go to break these variables down, to cancel them out, I need cubes. So I'm going to say this is x cubed, and the cube root of x cubed. So I'm at a total of 3, 4, 5, 6. I need one more, so I'm going to say the cube root of x. And then my y's, again, I'm just going to write underneath the cubed root of y cubed, and the cubed root of just y. So let me just say that one more time. Because this is a cubed root, the only way for them to cancel is for them both to be threes. So now I have to go with x cubed and x cubed, and an x, that's three, six, and one, for a total of seven. To get y to the fourth, I'm gonna need a three and a one. So now I'll just go through, I know the cubed root of eight is the number two. Those cancel, so out comes an x. Those cancel, out comes the x. This guy's going to stay under the cubed root. Those cancel, out comes a y. And that guy's going to stay under the cubed root. So when I go to write my final answer, I have a 2. x times x is x squared. I'm pull out my y as well. And I'll take one big cubed root with the x and the y underneath it. Alright, number 5. Cubed root of 16, x to the 6, y squared. Okay, 
Now there's a couple of us who clearly aren't pausing the videos because we're having a hard time when we come back to class. Pause it, try it on your own, and see if they match. So you can see mine. I said 16 is going to be 8 times 2, and 8 is a perfect cube. I need an x to the 6, so I have 3 and 3 for a total of 6. And 2 is smaller than 3, so it's not even possible to break down. So now as I cancel, this becomes the number 2. Cube root of 2 stays. Those match, so they cancel. Those match, so they cancel and the cubed root of y squared stays. So I would say my total final answer is 2x squared cubed root of 2y squared. All right, switching gears one more time. We now have to talk about adding and subtracting roots. So I got a little ahead of myself. Let's make another note. And let's start and make sure this is in here. You must have the same number under the radical. Okay, you must have the same number under the radical to add and subtract. And then let's add, add only the numbers in front. Okay, so make sure that's starred, highlight that. You must have the same number under the radical, and then add only the numbers in front. So when I go to look at example 1, I can't just add 2 and 2 because 6 and 24 are not the same number under the radical. So what I have to do is break them down. Now 6 can't be broken down, so I'm just going to rewrite it as 2 radical 6 minus, leave the 2, and I'm going to break down the 24. What times what is 24, where 1 is a perfect square? I'm going to say 6 times 4 is 24. So now I can leave this as 2 radical 6 minus, I'm going to leave the 2, I'm going to leave the radical 6, and the square root of 4 turns into the number 2. So I'm going to multiply the numbers together here, so I'm going to get 4 radical 6. And now the rule says you can add only the numbers in front once the numbers under the radical are the same. So I have a radical 6 and radical 6, so I'm only going to add the numbers in front. So 2 minus 4 gets me negative 2 radical 6. Let's try another one. Negative radical 12 plus 3 radical 3. I can't add or subtract until the number under the radical is the same. So what do we do? We'll break it down. Leave the negative. What times what is 12? I'm going to say 3 times 4 is 12 plus 3 radical 3. Okay, as I go through, I'm going to leave the negative, I'm going to leave radical 3, and I know the square root of 4 is 2 plus 3 radical 3. Now I'm going to rewrite it, because we always want the number in front, so I'm going to call that negative 2 radical 3 plus 3 radical 3. Once the radicals are the same, you can only add the number in front. So negative 2 plus 3 gets me a 1, and leave the radical 3. All right, a little more exciting. We added three terms now. We're just going to break them down. So leave that 3. What times what is 18? Plus, leave the 3. What times what is 8? Minus, what times what is 24? All right, I need one perfect square, one non. So I'm going to go 9 times 2. All right, what multiplies to 8? 4 times 2. And 6, or I'm sorry, 24. Now you have 8 and 3, or 4 and 6. But remember, you have to pick a perfect square. So 8 and 3 are out. I'm going to go with 4 times 6. Okay, I'm just going to do a lot of cleanup. I'm going to leave my negative 3. That turns into the number 3. Radical 2. I'm going to leave my 3. That turns into a 2. Leave my radical 2. That turns into a 2. Leave my radical 6. I'm going to clean it up again. Multiply those numbers together. Negative 9 radical 2 plus 6 radical 2 minus 2 radical 6. Now hold up. Are they all like terms? Heck no. Only these two have the same radical. So you can only add these two together. So negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3 radical 2. And this guy, I'm just going to have to leave. I cannot add them together. So this is my final answer. 
only two of the three actually could get added because they had like radicals. This guy didn't, so it just comes along for the ride. Well, like I said, this was a big one tonight. Um, we really are going to work on our cube roots tomorrow and the variables under the radical. If you got stuck on anything, go back and rewatch it. That's your job. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.